Yeah, we, I just unmuted the mics. Thank you. Is this better? Can you hear? Hello? That's better, yeah. Thank you. You can hear now. Sorry about that. Hello, 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 hello. There's nothing being said that's that important <laughs> at all. So we'll ask staff to give us an update on PG-1802. Okay. Uh, PG-1802 is a grant application request. You guys actually heard this uh, request last meeting and um, the applicant wasn't present and so there were some questions that couldn't be answered. So you decided to uh, continue it to this meeting. Um, the grant project uh, proposal is to repair um, front porch. Uh, originally, the applicant um, included in the grant request railing. Um, and this is the designated structure, the Joseph and Edward L.C. Natal House at 803 Fifth Avenue in Kanima. Um, there's, we couldn't find any evidence of an original railing on the porch, and so the board had some concerns about that. Uh, so the applicant has modified their request uh, to um, limit the grant funded portion of the project to just the porch repair and not any new railing. Um, so they provided an updated bid uh, that removes that portion of the project and um, provided some pictures of the damage to the current existing damage to the porch as well. And staff, um, the, the applicant can come and make a presentation if they're if they'd like to. Uh, and but staff is recommending um, approval with conditions of the grant. Okay. Uh, applicant is Linda Thompson. Would you like to talk with us? If you want to, what do you want me to say? <laughs> you don't have to. Do you have any want. questions for us? I don't. I sent some pictures of the um, Do we have a copy of that new bid? Yeah, it's in the... Yeah, which one? There's four. There's yeah, two bids. There we go. Kelly, was there additional pictures of? Uh, we've got, yeah, I think I've put them in the staff report. So here's the home. I'm just going to, we're going to look right at the staff report here. Can we turn those lights off for something so it's easy to see? Sure. Who does that? I think I can do that. Okay. Oh yeah, there's the mood light. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, the pictures are not in the staff report. Here we go. I'll pull them up. Oh, it's a little slow. There we go. Uh, so there's one photo. Let's see if we can. More photos. That was flipped upside down. That's got a root, yeah. That last one. Rotated. Was gotcha. Probably. Mm -hmm. Underneath the deck, pretty much in all four corners of the deck, it has the same dry rot as you saw in the second um, picture there. If, if you could come up. And, and sit here so that what you say is recorded. That would be helpful. And for the record, state your name and uh, city where you live, even though we know that. I'm Linda Thompson, the property owner. Sarah Brown, family friend, helper. <laughs> okay. So you were explaining what we're looking at in the picture, which basically is that the uh, old porch needs to be rebuilt. Yeah, that's upside down. Yeah, that's basically what we're looking at in all four corners, quite a bit of dry rot. And I am looking here this at is... the uh, bid from Elk Ridge Corporation. That should be the second one that was submitted for uh, the uh, mm. one without handrail. 
correct, Kelly? I it's have only okay. one page of bid here. Yep, that's the the revised bid is yeah, the one page. Okay, that's the one. Yeah. Are you finding it right? I found Elkridge and then the other other one. There's quite a discrepancy in the bids. Close that one. Let's see. So the siding that's being replaced, I'm I'm going to guess that the rot from the porch surface has invaded the siding. Is is that how you're correct? What's what the siding is is somebody has used uh Originally, underneath the the deck surface on the sides for siding is shiplap siding, and you probably can see that from the second picture that there's a ri- the original shiplap siding underneath the concrete. Somebody took concrete and covered the, all the shiplap siding, probably to yeah, the protect the yeah that picture. Protect uh, the other no. picture. Underneath the concrete surface, there that's just about a quarter of an inch of concrete, but. On the right hand side of the picture there you can see the shiplap siding that was what was original to the porch whenever the porch was built so that's oh. what the he explained to me that that's what the would be replaced with okay. reclaimed shiplap siding that was bring it back to original because somebody at some point put concrete uh a concrete surface over the top of that where's that over um that porch sits higher than 30 inches off the ground, is that right? Mm. Yes. So that porch will need a permit as well. Right, yeah, and yeah. it will be submitted before this yeah. was started. We wanted to get that all going at the same time. Okay. I don't have any questions. All right. Nope. Let me close this out. I have no questions. I uh, just wanted to clarify those couple of things. Um, and if you have no further comments, uh, yeah. I have one we'll, question. If um, do you guys have any old photos or anything of this house originally, or? I've looked a little bit, but I haven't been able to find anything with the city I, or. I don't know. That would be through the city or their website, I guess. Yeah, the okay. only ones are the ones in the inventory form that you. Right, that we already one used. from 1978 or whatever. Okay. It's yeah, a hip that's, decade. that's all I know of. Okay, I would entertain a motion on approval of the grant application. You're making a motion or you want someone to make a motion? I'm asking for one. Uh, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve PC 18-116 preservation grant for 803 Fifth Avenue porch repair and rehabilitation. Is that all second? Very good. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we're not done. So I'll work with you. I guess oh, we have sorry, to do a vote. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. It's been a few months. Uh, um, Mr. Stobie. Yes. Mr. Basinger, Chair Aye. Basinger. Mr. McLaughlin. Aye. Oh. He's the uh, motion carries. Grant is approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go spend some money. Item four on the agenda. Oh, thanks. You can go back to your seats. Thank you very much. And I will work with you. Um, I'll have a sign that you can post on the property while the work's being done. Absolutely. Uh, and then it's reimbursement. So right. you'll just get receipts and then um, we'll cut a check when the work's done. And you pay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Item four on the agenda is design advice for new construction in the mixed-use corridor in the uh, McLaughlin Conservation District near 5th and Monroe. Is is there a uh, commission report or, or staff report on that? Uh, 
Yeah, uh, I do have a little bit of background to give you before the applicant comes up. Um, so this project is on Fifth Avenue, uh, just Fifth Street. Fifth Street, thanks. Yeah. Um, traveling kind of up the hill, going past Monroe, the intersection at Monroe. Um, there's a, a commercial building, 1960s era um, commercial building on the corner. And then there's a vacant lot um, just next to that that's forested currently. Uh, so it's about a 5,000 square foot lot, um, zoned mixed use corridor. And the uh, applicant would like to build multifamily units. Um, on that lot and so it would go through a site uh, depending on exactly what gets uh, proposed it might could go through site plan design review along with geologic hazard overlay um i, th I think and it's, i think it's bigger than five thousand feet isn't it yeah I was, it might be I, i'm sorry I didn't have, <laughs> it's okay. i'm just trying to look i can't read the dimensions it's uh amazing. it's just the yeah so it's just this property right here um, so, uh, looking at the design guidelines for um, multifamily residential, uh, outside of the 7th Street Corridor, um, on the 7th Street Corridor, there, let me actually, we can go to that page. Um, <coughs> so, on the 7th Street Corridor, streetcar commercial design is, is called for in the guidelines. Uh, any commercial development outside of the 7th Street Corridor um, design guidelines say Queen Anne vernacular or Foursquare uh, style is appropriate. Uh, so the this style proposed is a kind of a Queen Anne vernacular, um, which is uh, which meets the guidelines. Um, it's kind of a multifamily development, but with a nod to single family architecture. Uh, the structures are proposed as um, separated currently. Uh, it's not clear yet whether that would be allowed per the underlying zone. Um, and so there might need to be breezeways attaching uh, a, some sort of form of attachment that's not townhome, you know, four, four townhomes in a row attached because that would not be appropriate in the McLaughlin district. Um, but attaching with breeze, breezeways would be, and we have a precedent for that. Um, a swan fourplex, I think, over on Madison on the other side of 7th. Um, so uh, just, uh, just before the um, board, I, I want to just point out a couple of items that, that staff kind of noticed um, and wanted to bring up, and that is that uh, the front facade of... So this is the corner, the unit on the corner that faces the street. Um, and the applicant is showing, let's see, a uh, front door facing fifth, but um, the architecturally significant facade is kind of still facing inward and not facing the street. And so um, we'd want that kind of the front gable to be facing the street. Um, of course, uh, probably one over one windows would be more appropriate than the slider windows that are shown. And then um, lastly, the height. Uh, the design guidelines call for Queen Anne vernacular maximum height of two and a half stories, and these are three. Um, four square style room multifamily also has a maximum of two and a half stories. And so um, I, staff's interested in you know, hearing what the board thinks about the height in this case. And that's all. Uh, and I have, I think, all of the drawings um, in addition to some uh, excerpts from the design guidelines to pull out and reference as we kind of talk through this. OK, thank you. Is the applicant present? I am. John Finkley, I'm the architect, and I'm here on behalf of Teresa Yip, who is the owner of the property. So these are separate residential units. Um, we separate, we actually, we started out attaching them and 
and we found out that that wasn't acceptable design in this particular area. So we basically separated them. There's seven feet between the units, and we are we borrowed um, massing and features from the Queen Anne vernacular. And that's basically the floor plan is is about 1,500 square feet. A portion of that is storage downstairs. It's a tandem two-car garage on the bottom level. And do you, do you have a view of the back of these units? Probably there. inch one, yeah. Yeah, if you can see up at the top, you can see that the bottom floor is effectively buried, buried into the hillside. And, and, we, and we did that so that we could get, we didn't raise the units, we just dug into the hillside so that we could not have too great of a grade change when you leave Fifth Avenue to get onto the site. And it, it slopes up at kind of an angle from the west to the, to the east. This, this site is not due north, it's tilted a little bit. But it appears even from the rear and the side, they, they still appear to be three stories. Definitely. Yeah, they do basically, yeah. and and if you the from the basically the south side, you can't you wouldn't be able to see these uh, units. the The path that's up there is sixty feet away from the back. Even though we're jammed up against the the property line, we're only about ten feet from the property line. It, there's about thirty feet before that path begins, and, it, and it's a wide arc where it goes up. Um, John Quincy Adams, and which is an unimproved street, and it's a paved pathway, which is seems to be very popular. But the landscaping up there is not managed. It's it's left to grow pretty wild, and it looks like it's heavily treed, but it really isn't. It's deceiving because we've already had it surveyed, and on this piece of property right here, there's only about 12 trees, but it looks like it's forested when you go up there, but there's a lot of spindly tall trees that have been competing with the other large trees. And so they got tall without a lot of trunk to them. So can you tell me what the, the property size is? I was looking at that to see if I had it, but it's over 5,000 square feet. It's, it's pretty close to, I mean, we've got 5,000 square feet in a pervious area here. Uh. So it's pretty close to 8,000 square feet, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just looks bigger than yeah. that. Because we have to go under the stormwater guidelines because we're over 5,000 square feet. So I'm just here to, just to get your general reaction to see if we're on the right track here. Well, you heard uh, Kelly talk about the planning department's concerns. I did. Uh, regarding the facade that faces Fifth Street. And I get that. Uh, do you have ideas for... Um, that could easily be modified to do that, yeah. And, and the intention is to have a separate entry and pathway off of Fifth uh -huh. to going, um, going up to that house. And it'll be sitting, I think the floor will be sitting probably about four, four to five feet above the elevation of the sidewalk on fifth, which is climbing at that point. And then the property slopes upward in both directions. It sort of slopes up from the northeast to the southwest on a fairly, it's about, it's a little bit less than 20%. But it, and it's pretty steady. Surprisingly, there's only about a 12 foot difference over the area of the site where we're building. Okay. It's a 9,000 square foot lot, I double checked. Uh, what is it? Nine, about 9,000 square feet. Yeah, 9,000 square feet. So we've stepped the houses up about, each house is, up, is about 30 inches higher than the adjacent structure. There's a curious design element on number two and number four. 
Oh, the, the, on the are you talking story. about the angled thing? That was rejected by, you'll see it's not on every one of them. That was okay. actually rejected by the owner because she didn't want to give up the decks. Okay. Uh, that, was a, that, was a, that was an idea that I was, was great, but just didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't see wants, that as appropriate. On she wants porches on all four of them. So I'm looking at the renderings now. Yeah, no, that will that will be. I think they were changed so, on some of them. Yeah, because there's like a perspective rendering here that shows the porches on all four. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, That's a revised one. This was an earlier concept. Can you, can you that? It's that kind of shady one. Yeah, that one right there. That's oh, what you're yes, that's about. the latest. Drawing showing the porches on all, all four. Gotcha. A little bit deceiving on the trees, but it makes the houses look great. Uh, I would say then the item of greatest concern at this point would be the height. Three full stories. Uh, did did you say there was a precedent for that, Kelly? Or? No. Um, three story. So the design guidelines talk about you know commercial and multifamily development along Seventh Street corridor with streetcar, uh, streetcar commercial design. Um, that th uh, three story height is appropriate there, but outside of the Seventh Street corridor, using you know these styles, it's two and a half stories. Okay. So is there, a, is there a way to, um, uh, a variance process or something to have that looked at? And, uh... Through the planning commission. Um, so, I mean, the, it would have to be a is that a possibility? historic review board. Uh, so it would have to be reviewed here and then also probably by, well, actually, no, I take that back. The underlying zoning allows three stories. However, um, the, the three stories might not be appropriate for his, you know, to meet historic guidelines. Oh. And so that's, the that's here different. is kind of where okay. that gets hashed out. Okay. And, and you'd really be dealing more, um, you'd be dealing with this board, but more so also the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association. Okay. I already know where they'd go with this. So. And you, you can you give me a hint? Well, I already know where they'd go with this. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they would approve it. They wouldn't have, uh, they Even in the sloped conditions that we have here? I, you know, it's, when I look at this, I think proportional aesthetics, it, you know, with the slope and the background and everything, it probably would, would fly just about anywhere, but probably not in the district just because of the massing. And, you, you know, you're up against a slope. You're, you're trying to dig in. You might have to dig in more. You might have to implement a different type of roof line to bring it down. And I, I totally get this. I totally get where you're going and you can hash out the finer details of windows or siding and, and things sure. like that. But the overall, I think it looks cool, but at the same time, it kind of looks like a, an apartment complex that's separated and it, it may not fly the way it is now. And I'm just giving you a, a brief and blunt. No, that's why, rather, that's why we're doing this. I, exactly. And that's just yeah. my opinion, but I also know the McLaughlin would would probably be critical of it. Okay. Uh, you know, you've got that Guild Mortgage building that's kind of low and hunkered down, and and that's not a. I, I don't even know what to just say about that building. I mean, well, they like, virtually flatten that site out to, to make it work. Right, and it's, yeah. so you've got this thing that's kind of there, and then you're right. bringing these behind it, and not to say that that's anything historic, even though it's pretty old. But these are. And like I said, these, these look great. I think they look pretty cool for the most part. I just don't know if it would work here. There might okay. have to be some massing issues to deal with as far as the height of them. Um, so, okay. you, you know, you want to get full square footage. So you're basically building a box with some trusses on top and putting a little a few Queen Anne doilies on it. And because uh, that's all they are is boxes. And there's got to be a little bit more character if it's a Queen Anne or something like that. Yeah. Um, you have some elements, but I, I think it's just, it's, it's really tall, you know? Um, so I, 
And if you haven't been to the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association or presented anything to them, we I would have not been able to make contact with them. I've called them on, and emailed them, but I've never gotten a reaction. Eh. That surprises me. I think it's because of the summer. I, I don't know what. Uh, well, I, I think that's also a place to go to get some advice, too. Okay, yes, for sure. Yes. The Neighborhood Association meeting will be required uh, if you have to go, if you, if you have to do site plan design review. Um, I'm, so I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. For a site plan design review application, oh, yeah. um, if it's required, uh, then a neighborhood meeting is also required. Um, and that's for getting feedback, but there's no, um, you know, they, they don't have any sort of authority uh, for approval. Um, but we value neighborhood involvement. They're pretty influential. and. To go before them and 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 find out what what they want, I, that would be helpful. I mean, that's what we generally ask people to do, and they and that's kind of where I, you start. I to thought it was a requirement, so I have contacted mm -hmm. them, and like I said, I've yeah. left. But it's also you, you could go to them as well because um, some of them are going to be more vocal than others about it. And, okay. And and nobody wants nothing to happen. Definitely wants something. It's just got to probably be more in, in tune with the neighborhood, I guess. Okay. So. Uh, there was the question raised about the style of the windows, and I, I do agree that a, a one over one style of window would be. Um, well, that's a pretty easy thing to hash out. That's too. pretty easy. Yeah. And, and you mean, say that again, explain that to me. Yo, one over one, you mean you want them? Well, single oh, hungs. The, They're going to be single hung. hungs. You're talking about a single hung? Double okay. hung, single hungs. Okay. And we, we weren't implying any sort of style. No, you're point. looking for the overall right. and just to get some idea. And, and we did look at the Queen Anne to see if they ganged up windows, you know, be, because there's a potential here of a view. And they do. So if, if it's treated properly, it will match up with the type of massing and, and those type of elements that are in the Queen Anne vernacular. They, they, they gang up approximately three, up to three windows that we've seen. Yeah, your porches could be an issue. Um, so, it, yeah, there's some fine tuning that needs to be, and, and maybe right. jazz and, it up a little bit. Yeah. And you know, looking at if you haven't already looked at the, the guidelines, oh, yeah, I've, I've looked at. Yeah, them. yeah. Um, no, I get what you're saying. So when I look at it, I think the porches, though they're cool, they may not be appropriate up above the windows. The yeah, the massing's pretty big um, because right now they look like modern townhomes and you're trying to make something a little bit more historic out of them but but not to you know take away from what you're trying to do i i totally get it no i get it i um, understand what you're saying uh and it is the way you've got that laid out is that pretty indicative of the slope or is it more so well it's at the access being able to get i mean we're trying to park two cars at, at each structure and you gotta get the cars there. And so there's no way to reorient those homes and in that depth. We're already pushed up against the south. But as far as they're stepped, is that is that grade going from low up, is that accurate or is it steeper it, than that? This drawing is fairly accurate. Pretty accurate. Yeah. Gotcha. But driving by there, it's hard to tell anything. You can't really see it. No. Yeah. Oh, that helps the top of there. So, so it gets a little steeper up at that lower corner there. Yeah, this is yeah. There's a, and we have to put a retaining wall because of the the building down below the way they dug it out. Yeah, we have to oh. retain we have to retain that because they gotcha. seriously dug that that site out. So you've got to come up with something. And right. Then, gotcha. And the pathway he was talking about is um, a Pretty paved. There. Uh, path, trail that goes Yeah, and it's on, it's on the south, it's oriented on the south at a big arch. Right here. Of Cross John it's Quincy. Corner. You can't really see it in this um. photograph for some reason. It's about six feet wide, six to eight feet wide. Mm -hmm. It's a nice path. Well, I don't have anything else to say. I'd work on dropping that roof line however you can do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and 
Yeah, it's just hard because you, you're trying yeah, to get is. everything done in a tight space, and so going vertical solves a lot of problems. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it looks nicer, too. I mean, the Queen Anne has massing the, the, and elements that are vertical, which I like. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I think it can be, if it's done right, it can be pretty handsome. Well, it's Victorian. Yeah. Um, But I understand what you're saying. I understand the reorientation of that one on fifth. I mean, that's is not it, that's not a big deal. Is it, I mean, I'm just throwing something out. Sure. I mean, it's is it ridiculous to try and pull these buildings together of some sort closer and have a garage space or storage space something in between that, that to drop them down, or is that just not? Again, I'm just throwing out an idea. Say that again. You've got these seven feet apart. Yes. You could even almost narrow them up, get rid of the garage level, drop them down to a two-story and have a common garage or something in between the two buildings. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't, there's no I space know. for I that. Look at that, but you know, you have to, in order to get the two, two cars, you, why do you need have to have depth. depth. Why, do you, no width there. why do you need two? I mean, um, if somebody's got a, a single car garage on these things, they'd be grateful for it. I mean, as opposed I thought to- we had to park 1.4 cars on i don't know is that true so right now the city's reviewing this planning commission is reviewing code amendments yeah uh as written currently those would change the parking requirements for multifamily to be one parking space per unit regardless of number of bedrooms okay. so um, so right you know right now it's in excess of one for each unit and so you don't build a garage for half a car. You have to, you know, you might as well go, go the whole, so yeah. the tandem, two, two tandem spots in each house. Sure. And that was just a code issue. And, and, and when you're up on a hill like that, if somebody comes to visit you. Yeah, they got to probably park it, off the street, on the street. Well, when, but when we had them together, we were able to get three guest spaces, one at the top, and two at the bottom before you got on there. But, but when we separated them, we lost that. Yeah. And seven feet doesn't give you a place to park a, a vehicle. No, there's, yeah, 20 feet. Uh, 20 so, I mean, it's, you know, it's a function of, you know, balancing what what's important here, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's a tough one. <laughs> I think the key well, is, for your, key is, your is to thinking. keep working on getting together with McLaughlin. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, but thanks. Right. I mean, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, and thank you. I hope we've helped you some. Well, I hope you see me again. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. On the agenda next is. H.R. 1809, public hearing on a land use action for which we get to read the script about the uh, nature of the public hearings. So bear with me and I'll go through it as painlessly as I can. Two public hearings on land use applications are scheduled tonight. A staff report has been prepared for each application and has been made available to the public seven days before the first public hearing. The staff report identifies the approval criteria that apply to each applicant's proposal. Staff has analyzed the criteria which are contained in the staff report. The quasi-judicial -ju hearing procedure that the commission follows is set out in state law and Oregon City Municipal Code. The hearing steps are shown on the chart on the wall over there. Anyone wishing to speak should fill out a speaker's card and give it to the planning staff before the hearing. Speakers will proceed in the order in which their card is received. You should fill out your address on the card so the city can notify you of its final decision. For the public record, please begin all testimony by stating your name. Testimony 
and evidence should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria. If you believe other criteria apply in addition to those addressed in the staff report, identify and discuss those criteria and explain how and why you believe they apply to the application under consideration. A person may submit any written material while the public record is open on each application. Any written materials received by the city staff during the time period in which the record is open will be placed in the record. Written materials should be submitted to the public, uh, submitted during the public hearing, must be presented to the city staff in order to become part of the record. If a person intends for PowerPoint presentations, oversized poster boards, reports, pictures, or other exhibits used in their oral testimony to be placed in the public record, copies must be submitted to the city staff while the record is open. If they are not given to staff, they will not be included in the record. Any person wishing a continuance to present additional evidence and testimony or to keep the record open to respond to new evidence must make that request before the public testimony portion of the hearing is closed. If the Historic Review Board makes a decision with which you disagree, any issue that you may wish to appeal must have been raised for the consideration of the City Commission or LUBA or both. While raising the issue on the public record with sufficient specificity and accompanied by statements or evidence that the City and all parties can respond, the issue will not be deemed applicable, uh, appealable to the State Use Land, the State Land Use Board of Appeals. In addition, the failure of an applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its designees to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. So we will now open the public record for HR 18 dash zero nine review of a new home in Kanima at seven zero four third Avenue. We'll start with the staff report. I don't know that that's um, the, This is conflicts of interest. Does this relate directly to 1809? Uh, you just may uh, reference it, and I just want to make sure that there is no conflicts of interest on the part of the chair. Uh, we will be polled on that question in a few moments, and we will answer that question. And if you have a challenge to that, you may state it then. Okay. Do you want to do the ex parte part before I do my staff report? If you want to do that. Yeah, I think. Have all members of the board visited this site? I have not. Okay. Drove by it. I've visited. I have visited the site. Does any member of the board have have had ex parte contact with uh, anyone involved in this? No. Action? no. Nor have I. Okay. Now, I will say that I am a licensed real estate broker in Oregon. And in that capacity, I assist buyers and sellers of residential property throughout this area, including some in the Kanema and McLaughlin districts. The property under review is not for sale. And as a result, there is no actual conflict of interest. While I do have expertise in market values in this area, any decision I make will be based exclusively on the applicable criteria. Now, got a, got a question. You may. Thank you. What's going on? Paul Edgar, 
Oregon City, Kanema. Uh, I just uh, wanted to verify that the uh, uh, steering committee that you're a member of and chair of the uh, of CNA never discussed this and you never were part of ever discussing anything about this property uh, within those uh, within the process of evaluating whether the Kanema Neighborhood Association should or become uh, make comment. This property has never been discussed in the Neighborhood Association or in the steering committee. Okay, thank you. In this case, we'll move forward with the staff report. Thank you, Chair Basinger. So this application is for a new single family home in the Kanema National Register District at 704 Third Avenue. Uh, there was a home built here previously in 2006, and that was approved by the Historic Review Board in 2005. Uh, this is that home. It was, um, it burned down uh, sometime in the last few years. Uh, and now the applicant's here to uh, rebuild a new home in its place. So this home was approved in 2005. That was before the board adopted the new gui design guidelines. And so this was approved under old design guidelines. Uh, the applicant that's a current photo now, so you can see kind of the vegetation growth there, and the garage is still intact. And there's the existing garage. And there's uh, the existing foundation next to the garage, which is kind of, you can see it right on the left side of that photo. Uh, below the site is a, uh, a stream um, that flows through a man-made basalt channel. And this uh, stream, it's actually in the right-of-way. It's not on the private property. Uh, it, it, the basalt channels are mentioned in the um, Kanema um, National Register nomination. Uh, and so those are significant. The applicant's not proposing to change anything or modify the, those walls. And so here's a site plan. Uh, the house would um, be utilizing the existing foundation. And the applicant has proposed a vernacular style with the front porch. And then we see elevation or a perspective drawing. Um, uh, staff's made, uh, main concern uh, with this, and we've, I've written a condition of approval um, to try and deal with it, is uh, that, you know, we see in the, the original house, um, there were s significant steps to get up to the, the front door, and in, in this um, drawing, the house appears to be on the same level as the garage, a lot lower. Um, and while that may be how it's built, it's... Um, not clear that, that that would be physically possible after um, you know, using the using the existing foundation and going through any sort of geologic hazard overlay review that might be um, required. And so um, I've included a condition of, pro of approval that if the uh, access to the front door um, requires any steps on the front facade or um, more than six stairs on the side elevation, uh, that it come back to the Historic Review Board. Um, so that would be a significant change in massing uh, from the street. So there are recommended conditions of approval. These are the standard um, that generally we include on all uh, applications in Kanema. Um, I think this one is new. It's the fourth bullet. Minor changes to window location on the side and rear facades will be acceptable and may be approved at staff level prior to building permit issuance. We've had some recently that come up and uh, we don't want to make people go back to the board if they're changing, you know, one window on the side or moving it over to a little bit. Um, so we want to make sure that's approvable at the staff level. Um, 
no pressure treated wood, wood fiberglass windows and doors, um, smooth fiber cement siding, full light, half light exterior doors, um, uh, paint, color, paint colors and lighting. Those are all the standard conditions. And then uh, more specific to this application, uh, one of the elevation drawings doesn't show a front uh, porch railing and then the other one does. So we wanna make sure that if that porch railing is included, um, that it has a top and bottom rail, perpendicular, perpendicular balusters, um, and as few as possible to meet building code. Um, so wide, as wide as possible spacing in between those. Uh, for the lattice work under the front porch, um, need 90 degree perpendicular wood lattice or other architectural styles that are appropriate for the style house. Uh, exposed lattice um, shall not be more than six feet in height, and that's about what's shown on that perspective drawing. Uh, and um, that fourth bullet uh, is the stair step condition um, that needs to come back before the historic review board if there's significant uh, stairs to the porch. Uh, and then the last condition, um, and these red lines are, uh, I'm walking those changes on right now. Um, so those are different from what's in the written staff report. Um, so I'm, I just wanted to clarify those a little bit. So that's what you see in red underline. Um, landscaping uh, to shield massing um, that would be determined uh, at the time of um, certificate of occupancy, kind of when the building is finished and we can kind of see where the landscaping would do the most good. Um, and that would be determined uh, by staff going on a site visit with the applicant and kind of picking out locations for those plantings. Uh, that's my staff report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant present? We need to have a shot clock. Of time, do we have that? Uh, my name is Ray Strines. Um, my, uh, I and my wife Timer. is back Timer. here. Mary Strines of the owners of the property. And my name is Mark Zawatsky. I'm a contractor and also family member. Okay. Uh, you have submitted an application here. Would you like to I guess we uh, comment on anything in your application and anything that... Well, everything was already commented, you know. We just <laughs> wanted to build a house on existing foundation, which was the house burned down in 2006. I think 2007. Okay. Um, 2013. 2013. 2013. was built in 2006. <laughs> so... Um, so it's pretty simple, you know, I just want to get a vernacular house, a little bit smaller, less load on an existing foundation because the last house was about two and a half story. This one's going to be only one and a half. Mm -hmm. It was a bungalow style. This one we want to go with a vernacular, right? Vernacular. 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 And foundation is the same. Everything's the same. Yeah, we've already had the foundation checked by a, a, a engineer. Uh, engineer and the foundation has been approved with some repair modifications work. and yeah, some, some repair work. work. Uh, can I ask you a question? Um, the, the pitch of the existing garage, do you know what that is? As opposed to the new house, do you know? The, excuse me? The pitch of the roof of the garage. The, the roof is, uh, I think, 712. And the proposed roof? And the proposal is 712. The elevation shows different. Yeah. Maybe 812. Yeah. I wanted 712 eight, first, 12. but I have an 812 right now. Okay. Because if we go to the... If we can do the front elevation. So the vernacular, they asked me to for 812. Yeah, I would propose 712, but uh, Christina Garnier, she asked for 812. Yes. So, so you have the uh, front elevation with the garage. There's that one that shows both together. Whoa. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that. That doesn't, I don't so think that's. I think the garage looks more like a, a 10. Yeah, it is 1012. So. And the house is, you're saying, is an 8? 812. Gotcha. And I guess we should say that uh, we have no problem with the staff uh, changes that they that they want. Um, 
uh, we are hopeful that there won't be a need for any steps up there, but if, if we have to do that, we, we will. There won't be. Um, there might be a couple of steps, that's about it. We're gonna work it out on the grade. It's, it's fairly- You're gonna increase fairly the grade further. to the house to eliminate the stairs, is what you're saying, Eric. Yes, gotcha. and we want, uh, I mean, uh, I, I guess I should add that I'm building this house for one of my daughters. Uh, that she and her uh, fiance are going to be buying it. And we've already talked to them about some landscaping ideas. We'll work with staff. But we do want to hide that, the, the part uh, up to the porch. Uh, I mean, that doesn't look very attractive. Uh, I guess with the, with the, the thing there, maybe it fits the vernacular style or it's the best we can do right now. But we do want to get something, uh, landscaping, that will cover that. Uh, and uh, and uh, look, you know, and fit in with what's in the neighborhood and what's with native plants to the extent possible. You could also, I don't know if it'd be appropriate, but you could side that as well, uh, the deck below. Um, that, I mean, it's yeah. an option. Um, I guess we could. I mean, we're, we're actually going to be up against the cement there, but you know, we can put the boards in and do that. You could. You could side it. Um, if uh, that'd be preferred, we don't. I don't think we'd have a problem with that. No. It's about the same cost, I think. Isn't it? No problem. I mean, so high, and you know, because we have elevation issue there, so it's so high, we're not gonna be able to see it anyway. I mean, it's just gonna be all good. Mm. Some roses there. Yeah, and that's one of the problems with this property. I mean, it was a, initially, and now I mean, the driveway is fairly steep uh, as it is. Uh, we don't have much room to do it. We can't move down down below. We can't do anything because of the. Uh, that um, creek, the creek, as they describe it, sure. Um, and it, it's up; uh, it's fairly up high, and this is really the only, uh, the flattest spot uh, on the property. <laughs> and there is a wall; you don't see it here. There is a wall behind there uh, because the property lot ahead of uh, behind us is up higher. So we had to put in a, a land uh, or uh, a, a wall there. Well, I really, comparing this design with the one that burned down, I really like this one a lot. Uh, it, it probably okay. fits in better. It, that was probably too much, too much house. Um, it was, we're trying for a specific market. One, it didn't, we couldn't sell it. I mean, we put it for sale. There were some legal things with it as well, entitlements, but we both tried to sell it. Of course, it was built and came on the market in 2009, which, you know, it's not exactly a good time to be selling property. Kapow. But uh, never had any, and you know, we, we got, uh, you know, a realtor told us, oh, it's a $400,000 house. Right. We listed it, I think, down to three hundred, and still couldn't sell it. It was just a little bit too big for a neighborhood, so we just yeah. decided to go a bit smaller. Yeah. Time. I, re I remember that. We were all chasing the market down. Yeah. <laughs> Tough times. With no parachute. Uh. I don't have any. like the house thank you yeah okay if you have nothing further to add okay. i don't have any requests for public testimony so at this point we will close the public hearing and go to deliberation and we thank you thank you thanks my opinion is that this is pretty easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask, Kelly, the, you're on those bullets, those red, which you talked about. So if we approve this, it would be with uh, the most current. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if recommend you, um, with current conditions of approval. Yeah, with current. the conditions of approval. And so we'll add the PowerPoint to the record. And then okay. you can say it um, with the recommended conditions of approval uh, in the, um, as amended in the PowerPoint is how you could make the motion. Sure. I'd make a motion unless someone wants to talk some more. Uh, but I gotta go to that. Uh, let's see. I would make a motion to approve HR 1809, his um, new home in the Kanema district at 704 3rd, 3rd Avenue. Uh, with conditions of approval as amended in the PowerPoint. And I'll second that. <clears throat> Thank you. And we'll ask staff to pull the board. 
Grace Toby. Aye. Chair Basinger. Aye. John McLaughlin. Aye. Motion passes. The motion passes. And you can move on with your project. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll get a notice of decision out to you all over um, by mail and by email later this week and uh, let you know of any other um, geologic hazard kind of what, what engineering needs for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Item five on the agenda is HR 1811, review of a new home with detached garage and accessory dwelling unit in the Kanema neighborhood uh, at Fifth Avenue and Apperson Street, neither of which actually exists at that site. <laughs> We've met you folks. We'll move with the staff report and... Do we need to do ex parte for this one first? Oh, or? we should do that. <laughs> Have board members visited the site? Have not. Yes. I have yes. also visited Four. the site. Uh, during the oh. period when the... Uh, applicant was purchasing this property my wife and I as realtors represented the seller in the transaction the buyers were not represented so we were not under any contact track with them but because they were not represented we had a uh, higher direct interaction with them during the course of that however there's nothing in this application that has any potential to benefit us monetarily or in any other way unless they invite us to come and stay with them. Chair, uh, I need to call um, Commissioner Pye. Okay, uh, yes. So he's going to call in. Um, so this is ready to go whenever I'm, you are. I'm content to, yeah, he can, he can call in. Do we, and, and wait? I'm content to uh, uh, vote on this in, in accordance with the uh, opinion stated by the city attorney. Okay. So we probably don't need to call him. Is we, that correct? No, not if you're not going to, yeah. We're fine if, if we have three, a quorum. Yeah. And he doesn't have quorum. to re recuse, then we won't need to call him. Well, in that case, right? I will. Can you uh, give me a moment to send him a message and let him know that he's off the hook? <laughs> I want to be off the hook. Are we oh. finished with the... Um, yeah, we are. Okay. Um, okay, he, he got the message. So we'll move with the staff report then. Okay, wonderful. Good. Okay, thank you, Chair Basinger. Uh, we've got an application for a new single family home and a detached garage with upper floor accessory dwelling unit in the Kanema National Register District on uh, a vacant property. Uh, it, while it is at the corner of unimproved 5th and Apperson, the access to the property is from 
uh, Fourth Avenue. And this is a 10,000 square foot lot, 250 by 100 lots combined. Uh, it is in the geologic hazard overlay uh, and will have to um, undergo geologic hazard review um, along with a natural resource overlay review. Uh, there's no natural resource on site, uh, but there's a nearby stream, and so there's a uh, potentially the buffer area is on this property, and that's the reason for the natural resource overlay review. Uh, so this is the existing condition of the site. Um, it's behind uh, a designated structure. There's a driveway from Forth. Um, here's the house in front. That's the um, A.E. Davis house. The site plan, um, got the house um, towards the unimproved right-of-way. Um, driveway comes up in the middle and then the garage and ADU are um, towards the unimproved alley. And so you saw this house uh, twice in May and in June for design advice. And the uh, design has been slightly modified since then. Uh, it's a, according to the applicant design, is a modified bungalow. Uh, and so we're kind of using the um, design guidelines for bungalows to review this. Um, Staff's concern is the um, height of the structure in the second story porch. And so um, I've written a condition of approval and then also kind of some alternative options um, for tonight. Uh, so we can kind of go through all of the uh, as needed um, for the discussion, all the elevation drawings, uh, the materials proposed and uh, the kind of design details uh, meet the design guidelines for bungalows generally. Um, and the issues with the second story porch, uh, they're not supported by the design guidelines. Um, the front gable uh, for the porch creates more of a vertical element and draws the eye up. Um, uh, Second story porch um, on a bungalow is, is not found in Kanima um, or really um, in the region for on, on bungalow styles. And uh, it's flushed with the first story porch and not recessed at all, which kind of adds to the, um, uh, draws the eye to it. Uh, so staff has uh, suggested a few options um, because of this, um, because of the, because this doesn't meet the design guidelines and the applicant hasn't really provided an argument um, for why it should, should um, be approved. Um, uh, one option is denial of the application. Second one is continuing the hearing to allow the applicant uh, to redesign the house with a more appropriate second story design um, or a condition of approval um, that, that staff kind of identified as this is how it could meet the design guidelines. Um, certainly not the only way, uh, but um, kind of the clearest way that, that staff kind of saw, but that would be to recess the porch behind the front facade, um, use a side gable and a shed dormer. Uh, the applicants also requested a preservation incentive uh, to reduce the side setback from nine feet to five feet for the detached garage. Uh, you can see the stairs coming off of that uh, building are five feet from that unimproved right of way. Uh, because of it, many times uh, detached accessory structures um, get reduced setbacks. However, because of the second story ADU, the height of this building is such that it um, is required to meet the underlying setbacks um, for the zone, uh, which are five feet on one side and nine feet on the other. Um, so we, the home side setback is five feet. And so this side would re be required to be nine feet. 
uh, the applicant, um, the reason for the request is to maximize uh, the maneuvering space in the driveway and then also to allow for um, a decent amount of landscaping in between the driveway and the home. That's, um, I'm guessing, uh, the six foot three inch area there. Uh, so staff provided some findings in the staff report uh, to support the preservation incentive, but um, I'd like to add these additional findings. Um, so the findings in the staff report, uh, just to go over those for the preservation incentive are, um, uh, that uh, the presence of the alley, um, uh, creates a situation where the building would still be a significant distance from any other um, properties. Uh, the building itself is proposed with the seven foot nine inch setback. Um, only the staircase is five feet from the property line, um, although seven feet nine is still less than nine. Um, and then the lot coverage uh, overall is well below the maximum permitted. Um, and I'd like to add to that that uh, you know, there aren't a lot of guide, uh, there's not a lot of criteria in our code for the preservation incentives. Essentially our code says that uh, if, a, um, if a design or if a structure is found to be, you know, if, if the historic review board gives a certificate of appropriateness and approves the structure, um, then that, that structure is eligible for preservation incentives. Um, and so without really a whole lot of criteria, we go back to the purpose statement of the overall chapter, um, which I've included on this slide, um, essentially, you know, to protect the, um, protect and enhance the historic district, preserve uh, structures. Um, and uh, as far as findings related to that, uh, related to the purpose statement, um, Granting this incentive won't necessarily make this structure more compatible uh, with the district, um, but there would be no adverse effect uh, if the incentive is granted. Um, also, historic garages were often located on or near alleys with no setback. Uh, and then the, the landscaping area in between the driveway and the home, you know, maximizing that will uh, further separate the home from the parking area, which will break up the footprint and massing of the overall site. Uh, so I'd like to add those findings, um, or I'd recommend adding those findings. And uh, standard conditions of approval, uh, these are very similar to what we saw for the last application. Um, Again, the minor changes to window location being done at a staff level. Also minor changes to um, the rockery walls um, as well. Uh, but if, the, um, if there's a height change of more than one foot to any of the rockery walls, then it would be considered a modification and have to come back to the historic review board. Uh, for the garage doors, a carriage style garage doors or an alternate that's compatible with bungalow style. Uh, and then um, conditions of approval related to the lattice work under the front porch that are similar to the last application we saw. Um, any changes exceeding uh, one foot as from what's shown in the plans um, should come back to the historic review board. That's the second bullet. Uh, and then I'd like to add a condition that was inadvertently left out of the staff report and that's uh, landscaping um, to shield the massing. So we have another situation where we've got an upslope uh, and the front of the home will you know, be have a lot of exposed foundation area. And so we wanna make sure that's um, shielded. Uh, and so um, we've got a maximum four trees and 10 shrubs. And again, we would um, select locations after construction. Okay, thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to come forward and comment on anything that was raised in the staff report or give us any other details? Not 
Todd Heisman, Heisman Architects, and this is Morris Shademan, the property owner. Um, we have revised the design a few times, each time a little bit uh, as we've come back here. The, the full width porch at the second story is something that's very important to the Shademans, and they've got a spectacular view up there, and it's something they really desire to keep. There are not any precedents in McLaughlin or Kanema specifically of this. There were numerous porches that were full width that were sleeping porches. Um, that was a fairly common element throughout the region. Uh, they were usually enclosed. This is um, taking it to the other extreme where we're completely open. One of the options would be to actually put casement windows up there or something that could be opened up or removed. Um, but we prefer not to do that. Um, but that is an approach that we'd be willing to entertain if the board felt strongly about that. Um, we are not really recessing it back as staff has recommended, but with the roof overhang projecting out, we do have about three foot of roof showing there. If we get any more than that, then we run into issues with drainage and so forth. So we're, we're kind of wanting to leave it the way it is, but if, um, you know, enclosing this porch would <clears throat> feel better, we could do that. Well, typically on a bungalow, like you're saying, it'd usually be a shed story and a half that might have an enclosed porch or with a handrail mm -hmm. that might have a short deck. Um, but that's typically how you'd see it. It wouldn't be directly over the other roof. You'd typically have more overhang mm -hmm. on the roof instead of on the side view where you'd have them stacked in line. Well, we could push it back a couple of feet. So okay. maximizing the view is what you want. I, it's, it's probably great. It's, you know, um, but at the same time, your views are already cut down three feet by this porch. So if you're sitting there outside, you're kind of trying to look over that. So as a thought, mm -hmm. you, you, what if, and I'm just talking that with that porch is like what staff said when it's stacked. Um, even if you eliminated the porch and had a bank of casements, which would look pretty, you'd still get a killer view, unless what you're trying to get at is to sit up there and, and look out. Is that what you're after? Yeah, that would be one of the things, you know, on a nice evening, you know, sit out and look at the river. Sure. Um, what's the depth of that porch real quick? Do you know? Uh, I believe it's six feet. You know, cutting it down anymore, even if you went two feet, that'd be pretty squishy. I get that. But I also agree with Steph that it's really not appropriate for that style. But, but, um, uh, I don't know. Anybody else want to say anything before I keep going? You're, you're voicing the thoughts that I have. And you have a lot more experience no, in architecture than I have. No. So you're thinking four foot depth on the porch. Well, that's pretty tight. So that's mm -hmm. that's the master up there. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm just talking. Mm -hmm. Just talking. If, if that porch was even pulled back four or five feet and to maintain it, you'd be cutting into the master. But you're, I think the biggest problem is massing on the front. I, I totally get everything about it, but I think even maybe it was in June, I had mentioned that you, you're kind of onto what's known as an airplane bungalow where you've got that second story that floats mm -hmm. uh, above the first and it's completely surrounded by roof. And there's one on, like I said, on fifth and I think Madison, it's a yellow house, mm -hmm. but that's and kind of almost where you're at here. And that has the sleeping porch up there. It does on the, back i think doesn't it no it's on the is it on the side. front mm -hmm. but it's recessed it's not to the forefront this is like you're just stacked and if there's a way to bring it back i think that's what think but it's right on the front right that's the one you've got right yeah yeah, yeah the one i mean we had a picture of it before yeah 
But just for kicks and giggles, if you took that whole porch and went back six feet, you'd kill off six feet of your master, which, of course, you don't want to do, but, but you'd be pulling it back enough. And even and if you put it... We have a deck over the living area, which we don't want either. <laughs> well, if it's covered, and if, but even if you turn that to a shed, uh, you know, even a shed that had a valley of a ridge coming back and creating valleys on it, you'd, you'd have that look. But I, I also know the position of it isn't, like, right in the forefront, on, uh, forefront of the street. Um, so I can see there's arguments on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I don't know if I've seen in all the bungalows I've come across of a front elevation like that, historically. But I'd love to be proved wrong. So I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I, I think everything looks pretty groovy. Uh, there was also a staff comment about a hip roof on one end and a gable on the other. And I think I was the one who suggested the gable on the other end, if I recall. Um, I think it actually helps give it that horizontal emphasis that we're trying to achieve. Yeah, uh, and it's pretty tough to create that gable on the left, but the hips, you know, a hip's a tough thing to do on a bungalow, stylistically, even though it's pretty minor. Um, Man, I, there's so many great elements to it, you know, but then there's just a couple of things is what staff had mentioned that is kind of like a little bit of a hook at the same time. I wasn't sure I understood completely the staff's um, conditions of approval there about the... Like option three? Yes. Mm. Um, can you explain that a little better? Too? Yeah, well... Um... It would, here we are. Uh, it would essentially involve a significant redesign and probably a change to the floor plan. And so I, re I realized that it's asking that that condition may not work for you. That was just the only, um, the only way that I can see that it could meet the design guidelines, and so it would essentially take the roof of even the, you know, it would be a one and a half story almost in a way mm -hmm. where you'd have the um, a side gable roof uh, with a shed dormer coming out with a little smaller little porch or balcony um, coming out from that. Uh, and I think... Similar to that vernacular option that we had there's that one picture you had yeah, up a second ago. Yeah, let me go back to that. Um, so I forgot that I had this last slide when I gave my staff report. And here we go. Let me try and get to that. Um, these were the f images that we looked at when we had design advice. Uh, so this was one I think that um, uh, actually one of the board members uh, brought to a meeting. And so it, it was Grant. Yeah, so, so imagine that dormer as instead as a shed dormer and then have, have a, with a little um, walkway. I think that's kind of what uh, that condition describes. And like I said, I realize that that's a major difference. Yeah, that'd be totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, as staff, I could... I, I can't recommend, you know, something outside of the design guidelines. Well, on the so. right's the one we kind of modeled it after. I mean, it's enclosed, and like Don said, we can enclose the one we're doing, and it would look real similar to that. You could. Um, we did look at a hip roof, and it just really... It throws it all yeah. out, but we don't need this. This is kind of a transitional style, that one. Um, that's definitely transitional. But I kind of want to have that yellow house in front of my face so I can say, so I can't. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, I just can't. I can see it. I drive by it all the time, and I, I know the style. I just can't picture that porch on the front and how it, but it's recessed back. It's probably not recessed back that much. Um, it's enough that it has that illusion of it floating in the roof, like an airplane. Maybe Kelly can look that up. It's... Is it fifth and it's fifth and Madison Monroe or, or uh, Monroe, I think. I don't I don't want to waste time, but I, I don't 
JQ Adams? Is it a Craigslist? No. It's Madison well, or Monroe. It's not Monroe. It's, it's down Monroe's further. It's a white house. It's, it's a corner house. It's yellow. It's definitely the, uh, that airplane bungalow style. I don't... Yeah, it's I'm sort of a pure blank. Anyway. Um, so with these pictures... Um, I mean, if you, can we go back to the ele front elevation, please? Mm -hmm. If you did that on this one and you did that same look on the second story and, and made it a sleeping porch with, with casements that, would you have them open out like that one or open in, I guess? Probably open out. Because if you open them, you can pull them in and almost like an accordion thing, but. If you did that, would you make that part of the, the master or would it be a separate like sleeping porch? It would be a, a porch still. It would be a screen porch basically. It's going to be open on three sides. Well, yeah, so you'd have windows. windows coming on the return? Correct. So how, what would that do for your lateral? And in this year, if you created all those windows, would you have issues there? We can deal with that. Yeah. Can I see the side elevation? Thanks. The lower porch is six feet. Is there a possibility? I, I'm just, I don't know what setbacks are. Can you pull that porch out another couple feet? The lower porch. We could. Could you make that porch eight feet with a pretty broad overhang, mm -hmm. which would then add a, a couple extra feet to the front, which would make this have the illusion of being recessed and turn it into a sleeping porch with wraparound windows. Is that, that a possibility? Mm -hmm. might, look better. The it might look better. Yeah. If you did that and you pulled that out, you could conceivably make that hip a, a gable with a valley to it. But it looks from this side view, you've got the gable on the west on the front porch. So if you pull that porch out a couple more feet, and trying, is that front overhang Todd three feet? Uh, yes. So if you added another extra couple feet to the lower porch, keep your upper porch where it's at. It feel it'll have the illusion of being more recessed. Right. Give you Make the lower one the anchor out further. Even if you can push it even eight and a half, nine. That but. Make that a sleeping porch with wraparound casements that that would work. I, I think it might. But then on the west side of the porch where you've got that gable, we had it in the other way on the other design. It wasn't a gable before. We had it, we've gone back and forth between yeah. and a gable. Then. Yeah. But if you pull that out further, if you pull it out further, then your hip, your, the ridge to that hip's going to get pulled out further. Correct. So that's going to bring the, the ridge of that hip almost to the, to the corner, to the corner of your sleeping porch. Mm -hmm. Then it would make sense as it wraps around. Yeah. Then it, it would make sense having the hip roof there. Then you'd probably make the hip roof on the other side mm -hmm. and bring it around as a hip. You think balance that be definitely more looks better. I like the way that looked because before. if you're bringing that the hip ridge forward to the corner, you're going to make it come around so that that second story has the illusion of floating in the roof. Would that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? There's still one with the hip. Yeah. Let me look 
looks better with a gable on the top instead of a hip. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Is it uh, huh? this? You're saying make you that a hip? old drawings? Uh, yeah, you're showing me an old. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't look very good everything's hip. Some of the old pictures. So what happens if I see So the corner of the right up there on huh? the shingle, right there, if they bring this porch forward, then the hip just about comes to the corner at right there, yeah. And then it bring wraps them. around a little deeper and it comes around and they can take that hip roof and do the same thing from like that corner right there, going back, mm -hmm. I guess. Is that so it would make the front elevation more symmetrical? Yeah. Yeah. And then if you had like a 3030 or 30. 3, 4 something casements that wrap around that thing. I'm thinking probably three wide. Three foot wide. Well, no, three, three I, units wide for the casements out there. No, I, in between each one of the columns. I'd, I'd wrap it around just like that one house with casements Small all around. All the way around, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, narrow. We want to be. A little, but yeah, I see how these are paired. Mm hmm you might want to have either something like that or just a bank of casements that might be picture windows with casements coming around or something to get the breeze or right because when you're sitting on the porch and it's a covered porch think about it three feet wind well and you're 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 kind of sitting tall to try and look over and enjoy the view so you're outside so have them come down yeah, lower a little lower but yeah. but at least you're on the porch and enjoying it sure but it still has the look without without that porch and eliminate that, but you got the best of both worlds. Yeah, it's kind of nice. If it's raining, they close the windows too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but see, the other thing is then you're you're even more protected. You're not gonna have to worry eventually about... Bugs. And, well, just you know, weather on yeah. the porch and keeping it watertight. Um, but I think pulling the lower porch out further gives you the what you want for the sleeping porch, mm -hmm. the same depth, but it still makes the lower part look still in proportion to the house. Mm -hmm. That's not a hard thing to do. No, I think that would be a very attractive thing to do. I, I think it would look pretty jazzy, actually. And then you have to worry about <laughs> with doors, you got windows, you know, it's, it would actually, I think, look pretty attractive. So that's just my thought. I don't, I don't know. I like it. You know, did that make sense, Ray? Like yeah. what I was saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at the site plan to see what that does, and it, it looks like it just puts it closer to the driveway. And we're going to be building a retaining wall up there to retain some of that dirt and keep the appearance of the house down as well. So you've got some room to do it to add a couple of feet. So, you know. Yeah, we just don't want to push any farther back on the site, but we can come farther forward. The other issue is, yeah, the, the detached garage with the, the setback of five feet. I totally. I think where seven foot nine is, is, is a non-issue. And obviously the stairs come five feet, but they're, they're stairs. It's not the structure itself. Um, well, most uh, garages are built right on the alley in the neighborhood. But most garages don't have stairs right on the alley. That's, they're pretty much slammed all the way up, either property line or three feet or whatever. So we so, can buffer. <laughs> it is, that's why I'm saying for me, it doesn't have, I, I don't see a problem with it. Well, on the alley, probably never going to be improved. We're not asking for a vacation of it, which would be the other approach to take. Right, that's a little bit more process, but I, I don't, I don't know, from my perspective, I don't see a problem with it. So I'm done. And the setback on the other side of the property, I guess that's west. No, that's west. We're meeting the east. The right side? Yeah. <laughs> I can't read it on here. Five foot. Five foot. Could you, where the driveway is, if, if and if I said, you know, what I was saying, if you're, if that worked and you pushed it a couple of feet that way, is that going to be a, an issue? With, no. Okay. I think you'd like a little broader porch than six feet. That's pretty squishy. It would be really nice. Yeah. If you went eight or nine feet, then it all it only makes the upper it's story bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
but it'll only make the upper story look more in proportion the further you push it out. So, if we could have that as a condition of approval, we'd yeah, be happy to work with staff on that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anything else you'd like to add? No. Okay. We thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We have a couple of public comment cards here, Paul Edgar. Mr. Basinger, Chair Basinger, would you like me to provide timing? Yes. Three minutes is what they get. Yes. I'll just uh, uh, say thank, I'm going to be representing Friends of Kanema, uh, a nonprofit in, in the area. And I would like to have five minutes, please. Fine. Okay. Uh, first of all, my name is Paul Edgar, <laughs> a member of the uh, board of the Friends of Kanema. Um, I would like uh, to have, ask a question of Mr. Basinger again, if, uh, if he's discussed this at any time within uh, the steering committee or any other uh, meeting of the Kadima Neighborhood Association? Have not. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to ask for a continuance on this hearing until the next uh, deal. I would like to see the designs that are finalized as to how they look. Uh, there's so much uh, discussion about it. It's very difficult for a lot of us to visualize what uh, has been talked about. Uh, there are no bungalows in this area of, uh, on the upper area of Kanema uh, and of historic parallels. Uh, this would be a bungalow that would be twice the size of any other bungalow ever in Kanema in the square footage and it's disproportionate to the size of any comparable uh, historic house in Kanema that is of the bungalow style which are all down on third avenue this is really up on fifth avenue in an area which is has only vernacular of historic houses representations to the best of my knowledge. We don't see uh, any reason for a preservation incentive because this is new construction and on new construction there cannot be a preservation incentive on a vacant lot uh, according to uh, the codes within uh, Oregon City at this time. I will leave a little of that discussion to um, uh, our friend here who will talk about it, but uh, it's, uh, uh, this is not allowable at this time. This is really a two-story house. And it's a bungalow is one and a half stories. And if you look at it from the side, you look at it from the front, this is just a, a two-story house. A bungalow by definition within our guidelines is a one and a half story. Uh, the uh, garage and ADU unit, which have not really been discussed, has no parallel whatsoever in, in uh, design uh, to anything that's ever existed <laughs> with its uh, deck and, the, and its design. And uh, I don't know where anyone could say that it's appropriate. Uh, we spent a lot of time to, you did uh, discussing the other areas, but uh, we, we believe that the ADU uh, uh, design should uh, have some semblance, some semblance of a historic design of a house or a garage that has some, uh, that uh, it also must comply with design guidelines and there are, there is nothing about it that, that applies to any design guidelines that I've ever been aware of. Uh, Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You got any? Mr. Sita. Three. Thank you, Chair Basinger and members of the board. I'm Jim Nisita. I live here in Oregon City. Um, I'll try to speak directly in the microphone. Um, I appreciate this design. Um, 
Member McLaughlin, I very much appreciate your analysis on um, um, on the, the house tonight. I was winging um, it. What's that? I was winging it. Okay. <laughs> very well. Um, so, uh, as Paul alluded to a little bit, I represented the Friends of Kanima recently on an appeal of um, another one of your decisions uh, last year on the cottages on um, uh, between Fourth and Fifth, and I think I think it's Miller. Um, and uh, we did not win at Luba um, primarily because the record uh, had not been sufficiently developed um, below before this board and the commission um, uh, before I came in on the case. Um, and when I got on the case for Luba, um, I was kind of struck by a couple of things that I think are very hopeful in the future that I want to share you, with you th this evening. Um, and actually, um, I. You know, now that I've thought about it, I'll probably bring like a public comment and one of the next meetings, maybe when the city attorney is here, the actual opinion that Luba issued in that case. And, you know, if the city attorney's here, she can give her opinion and I can give my opinion and you can, you know, kind of get a sense of, of what Luba, Luba ruled in that case. Um, the biggest thing that struck me in that case um, was that I discovered that there's a provision in the definition section of our zoning ordinance that's been lurking unnoticed probably since it was passed in 2004 with the big amendment to the comp plan and zone, zoning code that we had back then. And I think that's what Paul was alluding to in his comments, and it's um, OCMC 17.04.815. And now that I found this, I'm going to start raising it a lot in these meetings because I think it's very hopeful, and um, I think it, it could avoid from some unhappy decisions in Kanemi in the future. In this case, I don't think it's going to matter much, um, but it has to do with that red circled setback there. And it deals with the preservation incentives because, in the preservation section of the zoning code, it um, applies to new construction. Um, and Basically, what this provision and the definition said, and I'll read it to you because it's, it's, it's hidden and it has this very specific definitions for the historic overlay district. 1704.815 says this, for the purposes of chapter 1740, which is the historic overlay district, new construction means an additional new building or a structure separate from the existing building mass that is larger than 200 square feet on all properties located within a historic overlay district. So what was Paul, what Paul was just conveying to you is essentially accurate. In order to apply a preservation incentive, um, Chair Basin, you may have uh, um, an additional minute. Can he's uh, please. Okay. When you have a vacant lot in a historic overlay district like Kanima, preservation incentives basically the, 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 the development is not eligible for a preservation incentive because it doesn't meet the definition, the special definition of new construction in 1704.815 because you have to, it, it's basically it's only applying to existing historic buildings. Um, so for example, if the home were a historic home, what the code is basically saying, you know, in order to give you flexibility on preserving that historic home, We'll give you'll cut you a break on a setback if that helps you. That logic really doesn't apply when the construction's all new, and and so it's kind of like um, doesn't really make sense the term preservation incentive when you're not preserving anything because there's no historic home on the vacant lot. Now in this case, you know, scrunching that garage a couple feet towards the house. I, I mean, this is like. It's really, it doesn't seem to me at least to be, you know, a big deal at all. But on some other project in Skanima, it could be, you know, really decisive. So that's, that's my comment on that. And I recommend you all take a look at that. The second comment I'll make really quickly is, um, and I'll, I'll save this for a, a, um, a future discussion. There was something really exciting in the case, even though we lost it, which is basically said, Lubick essentially held that our, our historic McLaughlin and Kanema guidelines are, are basically mandatory approval criteria. Um, and that's kind of exciting because, um, you know, once you get kind of loosey-goosey with, uh, you know, design guidelines and, 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 and design codes, you can really lose the character of a, of a neighborhood. So 
I'll just throw that out for the future. But okay. do take a look at 1704-815 as far as, um, you know, this project goes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's been requested that we continue this, and I would suggest that that be re-looked at next meeting, next month. I don't have that calendar in front of me. Make sure that it has the 30 days. September 25th. 25th to 25th. 30 day month, 31 day month. Yeah, that's, that works. Um, what day is, is it? So we will continue this at the September meeting. The 25th. Mm -hmm. And I would s ask the, the, the maybe staff can get us uh, answers to the issues that Mr. Nasita brought up. Regarding the mm -hmm. absolutely preservation incentive, and with that, we We're will done. close the public. Well, I think you need a motion to continue. And uh, oh, we need we, a motion to continue. I think so. Even if it's been requested, doesn't that already kick it in? I know that if it's requested on the first hearing, that you do have to continue it. But I do think you need a motion to continue. And vote. So what do we do? Make a motion to continue. Motion to continue and. Uh, you know, anything, I'm, yes, that's all you need. So just make a motion for, I make a motion for HR 18-11 as a continuance to the next. To we continue the order? That's to fine. HRB meeting in September. Mm-hmm. I'll go with that, I'll second that. Okay, uh, Ray Stobie. Yes, aye. Chair Basinger. Aye. John McLaughlin. Aye. With that, we close the hearing on HR 1811 for tonight. Do we have anything under communications? I have a couple of things for the board. Uh, I would like to know um, if we don't have any work sessions, such as you know today's meeting, uh, would the board like to begin meetings at six? regardless of whether there are work sessions or would you like to keep it at seven o'clock? What would um, you like to do? It doesn't matter to me at all. Well, everybody wants to be home. Nobody wants to be out late, but if it was my vote, I'd say we'd start at six. That's just me. I use the extra time to go visit sites, but I can go at six o'clock and just really yeah. I'm okay with that. I don't know how the other board members I'm, I'm feel. neutral on that. I, st I do seem to recall, though, that Grant has uh, potential conflict. Okay. But I could be mistaken. Okay. What if we did 6.30? Well, I think uh, potentially. I think next week, uh, next month, we'll have a work session anyway. So we'll start at 6, and then we'll do the dinner thing. Um, but maybe we can ask the question again whenever we're here and see what we think. That sounds good. Sure. Um, so the September meeting looks like, uh, I think I'd like to start our policy, HRV policies discussions. Um, and I think the fence policy is a good one to talk about. Um, so I, that might be on your September work session. Are there anything coming up for next month? Uh, well, we've got this continuance. We've got um, a grant. Um, and we might have staff concurrence um, for a fence. Yeah. Um, uh, other than that, I don't think we have any public hearings. Yeah. Um, other than this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then just to let you know, the, um, the Luba, well, the Luba, Luba upheld the city's decision in the Cottage Homes case. Um, that is now at the Court of Appeals, so that one's kind of still floating. Um, and then Luba upheld the city's decision on the Camp Adair uh, buildings as well, uh, that the city uh, chose not to locally designate those buildings. That's all. Yeah. Okay. With that, we'll adjourn the meeting. That's 847.